Yes, it's not often you lead off the show with a game featuring the Pistons and Rockets, but this game offered some of the future in the NBA. Top two picks in the draft, talking about Cade Cunningham and Jalen Green. Let's bring in CBS NBA columnist Bill Ryder. And Bill, uh, Cunningham, as each game goes along, gets a little bit better, a little bit better. Just his fifth pro game. He had 20 points on this night, a career high. 23 for Green, but all in the first three quarters. When you watch this duo play, what are your thoughts about their future in this league? I think the future is bright, and you said it, Jim. This is the first time and maybe the last time we'll lead off with these <laughs> two teams this year. But watching these guys play, especially the way that Cunningham played over the early part, first few quarters of the game, I think there's a real chance in the years ahead it won't be unusual for Pistons and or Rockets to lead CBS Sports HQ. I was talking to some executives earlier today before this game, and they assured me, and we know Jalen Green was good. We've seen what he's done over the course of the year. But they assured me that Cunningham's slow start, which you're right, you said has turned around, was just a blip. He was going to be fine. He is regarded around the NBA even still as an all-world talent. I think you saw flashes tonight of why each of these organizations, as much as winning is brutal to attempt right now, feel like in the next two or three years they're going to be okay because they each have a cornerstone. Yeah, Cunningham's interesting, right, because he kind of has this pace to his game. He kind of makes you play to his pace, much like when you when you watch Luka Doncic play. You play to his pace, in a sense. Uh, I want to get your thoughts, though, Bill, on the the Knicks Bucks Friday night in Milwaukee. And I get I get it. The Bucks don't have some of their starters, right? But the Bucks lose a 21 point lead and get blown out by the Knicks in Milwaukee. On this night, the Knicks fall behind at home to Milwaukee by 24 in the third quarter and come all the way back to get even. And they really did it with their backups. Their bench did it all for them to get them even. And they kind of ran out of gas at the end. Does that say more about the Knicks or this current state of the Bucks? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it says a lot about the Knicks in terms of their toughness and the fact they've taken on the personality of Tom Thibodeau in terms of who they actually are. I don't think it says a lot about the Bucks, Jim, in the long term. It says a lot about the Bucks where they are right now, and you right. hit on this. They've been injury-riddled this season. Now, Drew Holiday's back, but he's only back for three games. This is really the first game where he played really well. There's no Chris Middleton. He's the number two on that team. I mean, there are guys that are critical that are missing, and on top of that, and Holiday's absence was part of this until he returned a few games ago. They've just been atrocious defensively. And normally mm -hmm. in the past, when the offense is sputtered, the defense has been able to take over. So when you're not playing good defense and you're missing critical guys, what you need to do in the NBA is shoot a ton of threes, yep. hope a bunch of them go in. That's what happened for Milwaukee yeah. tonight. It's a recipe for right now. I don't think it's what they're going to look like or what they're going to need to do when they're healthy and when they're right in, say, a month or, or two months or February, whenever it is. Good segue with regards to that. They hit 26 threes at Madison Square Garden in the win. Pat Connaughton led the way there. The Knicks a year ago were best in the league at defending the three-point line. Not the case this season. Do you suppose that's going to ultimately turn around for New York under Tom Thibodeau? Yeah, I think it will. I mean, it's interesting. I was, again, talking to a ton of executives today, there's a real sense, and I keep hearing this again and again from GMs, from, from officials, from former players, talked to an Eastern Conference general manager today, echoing what everyone said, that the East is wide open, yeah. that everybody knows it, and that some surprise teams out there, the Bulls were mentioned, and the Knicks have been mentioned in all these conversations, actually have a chance. It's not going to be easy, but there's a window right now with the drama in Philly and the drama with Brooklyn and the fact that it's hard to repeat for, for the Milwaukee Bucks. And I think the Knicks know, as it's been explained to me, they feel like they've got the pieces, they've put together the squad, they've got the culture, and it's just a matter of playing hard, getting kind of lucky, and understanding this season might be an opportunity for a team a lot like the New York Knicks. Speaking of uh, the Brooklyn Nets, uh, Steve Nash mentioned this just yesterday with regards to have to keep in mind how much they're playing Kevin Durant with regards to usage. Not only playing back-to-backs, he's played them all, uh, but playing heavy minutes. He played deep into the playoffs and played heavy minutes a season ago. Uh, yet on this night, Kevin Durant, 11 of 12 from the floor, had 30 points, really didn't play the fourth quarter. So he was, again, uh, terrific for the Brooklyn Nets. But with regards to that, do you suppose that could be a concern for the Nets, relying so much on KD being on the court to get the results in the win-loss column? 100%. I think it's a great point. And it is a necessary evil. This is what happens when you miss a guy like Kyrie Irving, where you're expecting, to your point, Jim, 
not just 25 points a game. You're expecting 30 minutes a yeah. game and the ability really to sit hard and or sit Durant if Kyrie can come in, right, for those guys to spell each other. And you said it, not only is Durant playing a ton of minutes, his usage rate, just how often he has the ball and is actually having to control the game and being attacked by opposing defenses is the highest it's been to, since, what, 2013-14 when he was at the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's a long time ago. He was a much younger guy. But again, citing some of the folks I talked to today, there's just a sense around the NBA with all what they view as the parity out there you don't want to be that seven or eight. You don't want to fall to the five or the four. That people really believe that if you can finish in the top four in either of these conferences, you can make a run in the postseason. So as much as Brooklyn's expected to do big things, even without Kyrie, they can't afford to lose three or four games or go on a skid as crowded as the East is expected to be. And as you said, as you pointed out, that means Kevin Durant's going to have to do some heavy lifting for a big chunk of the season. Yeah, and they can't afford to lose him at all. They need him in these games. Again, 30 points on just 12 shots in the blowout of the Magic. He's CBS NBA columnist Bill Ryder. Bill, good stuff. We appreciate the insight. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.